Welcome back to the Motherland Channel. This video is all about pemmican. What makes it so important? That's one of the questions at hand. Allow me to explain. Pemmican serves as the ultimate survival food due to its high calorie content, ability to be stored without refrigeration, and its lightweight nature. Pemmican contains a concentrated amount of protein and fat, allowing it to have an incredibly long shelf life. In Native American culture, pemmican was a staple during the winter months when food was scarce, as it provided sustenance. Now that we know why it's important, well, what is pemmican? Well, it's dried meat, traditionally bison pounded into coarse powder and mixed with an equal amount of melted fat and occasionally Saskatoon berries, cranberries, and even cherries, currants, chokeberries, or blueberries. Cooled and sewn into bison hide bags in 41 kilogram lots, pemmican was a dense, high protein and high energy food that could be stored and shipped with ease to provision voyagers in the fur trade traveling the prairie regions where, especially in winter, food could be scarce. The introduction of pemmican to the trade is credited to British explorer Peter Pond in 1779. He acquired it from the Chippewayans in the Athabasca region and played a significant role in popularizing the food. Subsequently, trade posts along the Red, Assiniboine, and North Saskatchewan rivers became dedicated to obtaining pemmican from the local Aboriginal peoples and the Métis community. The Métis, using Red River carts constructed entirely of wood and secured with leather lashings, ventured onto the prairie to hunt and butcher bison. The meat was then converted into pemmican and transported in bags to fur trading posts such as Fort Alexander, Cumberland House, Fort Gary, Norway House, and Edmonton House. Furthermore, pemmican found usage beyond the region. The Royal Navy, for instance, provisioned several Arctic expeditions with beef pemmican produced in England. This highlights the wider reach and significance of pemmican as a vital food source during various explorations and expeditions. Now, just because it's a survival slash emergency food doesn't mean you can't enjoy it. Even in modern times, pemmican remains a valuable snack option for those venturing into the backcountry. It can be prepared in manageable quantities and within a reasonable time frame using the conveniences of a modern kitchen. Although there exist numerous variations of pemmican incorporating different meats and additional ingredients, our preparation, as we will discuss in this video, represents a relatively standard approach. There are various methods for making pemmican and the recipe may vary slightly depending on the person making it. Today's video, I'll guide you through the entire process of making pemmican. We'll cover all the steps and we'll witness firsthand how simple it is to prepare. Sharing food preservation techniques like this is crucial as you never know when you may require them. So, let's get started and make some pemmican. Today we'll break down the pemmican making process into three components. The first component is dried fruit, which includes blueberries, bananas, cranberries, and apricots. Please note that this is an optional ingredient and not essential for making pemmican. The second ingredient is meat powder, which is the foundational element of your pemmican. Finally, the third and last ingredient is beef tallow. It's important to use beef tallow for this recipe as lard is not suitable. Lard has a lower melting point, is too soft, and does not provide the desired texture. To start the process of making beef tallow, you'll need to obtain hard fat from a butcher. Once you have the fat, cut it into small pieces. You can choose to use a food processor or pass it through the grinder with a kidney plate, which will help break it up effectively. After preparing the chopped fat, place it into the basin of a crock pot. Add a small amount of water to the crock pot, cover it, and set the heat to low. Allow the crock pot to run for a couple of hours as the beef fat slowly renders and transforms into tallow. Once the rendering process is complete, it's important to strain the tallow to remove any food particles or residual fat. Begin by pouring it through a regular strainer to get rid of larger particles. Next, run the tallow through a cheesecloth to achieve a cleaner liquid consistency. Transfer the tallow into a mold suitable for refrigeration. Choose any mold you prefer and for easier removal, consider lining it with cling film. 
After a couple hours in the refrigerator, the tallow will solidify rapidly. Remove it from the mold and cut it into small chunks, ensuring that you've prepared the beef tallow element required for your recipe. Afterwards, it's necessary to prepare the meat. To achieve optimal results, it's recommended to use a round steak like the top round or bottom round due to its low fat content. It's crucial to avoid cuts of meat that are high in fat for this particular project. Slice the round steak against the grain and once the slicing is complete, cut the slices into strips that are three quarters of an inch wide. In the event that you're working with a cut that has a high fat content, make an effort to trim off as much fat as possible since we want the meat to be completely lean for the pemmican. Now, place the sliced meat into a container as we're ready to initiate the drying process. There are various methods that can be used for this, such as utilizing an oven or a dehydrator. However, to give it a traditional touch and infuse a smoky essence, I'll be employing my smoker. Once the smoker is operational, I will slightly reduce the temperature and ensure that the settings are accurate. In this instant, the initial hour will be cooked at 200 degrees Fahrenheit. Subsequently, the following 12 hours will be cooked at 165 degrees Fahrenheit. The desired outcome is for the beef to be completely dried and crispy. It should easily break apart when handled. If the beef is still pliable, it needs to be cooked for a longer duration. This is an example of what thoroughly dried beef looks like. As you can observe here, it can be easily broken into without any difficulty. Now it's time to transform the dried meat into powder form. One option is to use a mortar and pestle for this step. However, in this particular instance, I'll be utilizing my Vitamax blender as it has the capability to thoroughly pulverize the meat. I'll fill the blender with the dried meat and process it until it turns into a fluffy and 100% meat powder. Now that we've finished preparing the meat powder, let's shift our focus to processing the fruit. We need to transform the fruit into fruit powder as well. I'll be dehydrating a variety of fruits such as blueberries, apricots, bananas, and cranberries. Once they're dehydrated, I'll be weighing the fruit to ensure the right proportion is added to the meat. Next, I'll place all the fruit directly into the Vitamix blender and allow it to blend till it reaches a powdered consistency. It is acceptable if the fruit powder retains some small fruit pieces as they can contribute to a desirable texture in the pemmican. Now that we have both the meat powder and fruit powder ready, we can proceed to combine them. Take the meat powder and blend it thoroughly with the fruit powder, ensuring they are well mixed. Once they're evenly combined, it's time to consider adding an optional ingredient, salt. I recommend adding 1.5% salt based on the combined weight of the fruit and meat powder. This addition will enhance the flavor and make the pemmican more enjoyable to consume. Now it's time to consider the binding agent for our pemmican which is beef tallow. Let's begin by weighing out the appropriate amount of beef tallow. The goal is to use just enough tallow to hold the mixture together without making it too oily. Finding the right balance is crucial. If too little tallow is used, the pemmican will be crumbly, while using too much will make it excessively greasy. We'll melt the beef tallow using a double boiler and gradually add it to the powders and salt. Mix everything thoroughly once again to ensure proper incorporation. The fruit powder and meat powder will act like sponges, absorbing the liquid beef tallow. Since beef tallow has natural waxy properties and solidifies well at room temperature, it will effectively bind all the ingredients together. Now it's time to shape the mixture into small molds. These molds will be placed in the refrigerator for a short period, just a couple hours, as the pemmican hardens quickly. After that, we can proceed to cut it, taste it, and I'll provide you with my feedback. Here is the finished pemmican. It can be stored in a vacuum sealed bag without refrigeration. The entire process took around 18 hours to make five pounds of pemmican. With a majority of the time spent during the dehydration phase, particularly overnight, Let's explore its taste. The aroma is delightful, with a strong beefy and smoky scent. The fruits, particularly the apricot and banana, contribute their distinct fragrances, although the blueberry aroma is less prominent. 
One of the common criticisms of pemmican is that it is excessively dry and lacks flavor, making it challenging to consume. We'll now determine if this recipe manages to overcome those issues. The key to creating a good pemmican lies in eliminating any moisture. By replacing the moisture with tallow, we achieve an extended shelf life and shelf stability. Wow, it sounds like the pemmican turned out wonderfully. Smoky flavor adds a nice touch without overpowering the overall taste. The addition of salt enhances the flavor profile, preventing it from being bland. The fruit elements such as blueberries, bananas, and apricots contribute to a significant amount of sweetness to the pemmican. The binding quality of the tallow ensures that the ingredients hold together well and provide an easy eating experience without crumbling. It's fantastic to hear that the pemmican tastes incredible, has a pleasing texture. While it may not be your go-to snack for immediate hunger, it's exceptional shelf life, lightweight nature, high calorie content, and great taste make it an impressive survival food option. The use of tallow with its waxy and smooth qualities enhances the overall experience, coating the mouth and making it deliciously enjoyable. Pemmican is definitely worth a try and your positive experience encourages others to give it a shot as well. And that wraps it up for today. If you found this video helpful, share it with your friends. Give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and click on the little notification bell too for more valuable content. Until next time. Thanks and God bless.